Welcome to the Student Pilot Podcast. My name is Simon Callis, a flight school owner. Each week, myself and my guests will be talking all things flight training and beyond to help inspire, motivate and support you on your journey to becoming a private or commercial pilot. Okay, so welcome to the podcast, everybody. Um, This week, we are talking about aviation acronyms and mnemonics. Okay, now there are loads. We seem to learn new ones all of the time. Now, as a student, it's really difficult to get your head around all these different acronyms and mnemonics. So in our school, we try and standardize those to, you know, as much as we can do so that we we don't all confuse people, basically. (laughs) Um, You know, it's, it's best to keep things really simple. So your school might use different acronyms and mnemonics to us. Uh, But these are some fairly common ones. And as there are so many, I thought we might break this down into a couple of episodes. Uh, So today we're going to talk about in-flight acronyms and uh, mnemonics. Okay, so the first one we're going to talk about is ATPL. Now, this check is typically used in the holding point just before you enter the runway. This is when you're just about, you've been given your clearance to enter the runway and we're making sure things are good before we actually enter the runway so first one is the approach so is the approach clear so there might be somebody on approach that has not been announced you want to make sure visually the approach is clear and one tip somebody gave is that when you're in the hold you tend to line up square onto the hold like you're you're straight at it now if you're in a high wing aircraft looking out the window trying to uh, look down the runway it's actually quite difficult to to see things whereas if you sort of went on the angle towards the direction of the approach then you can see better from the front of the aircraft rather than just out of the side of the aircraft what is on the approach so you know typically like i say this is a real problem in high wing if the wing's in the way you can't really see if the approach is clear properly so that was just a little tip an instructor gave me once is when you're in the hold try and park on an angle if you like um, so that you can see as much of the approach as possible next one is t that's for transponders we want to make sure that the transponder is switched on the appropriate squawk code is entered and just before we enter the runway we want to switch the transponder onto the alt position onto the alt position okay next one is pito heat so switch on the pito heat as required and obviously that's down to your discretion but it's a reminder to put the pito heat on and lastly is lights Okay, so at the bare minimum, we want to have the beacon on anyway. We should have that when we start up. And we want the landing light on if we're on the runway. So beacon and landing light. And then you might want to have things like the the nav lights and the strobes on as, as required as well. So it's just a reminder to make sure that you've got the appropriate lights on when you enter the runway. So we'll go over that again. So it's approach, transponder, pitot heat, and lights. Next one, now these are usually in your checklist anyway. Okay, so this one here we're looking at is in the checklist, but it's just a reminder. I mean, what what I found was uh, helpful was to sit at home and learn these things from the checklist so you can almost kind of just spiel them out without having to, to look at it. But obviously the checklist is there for a reason. First one we've got here is the pre aerobatic or stalling maneuver check this is called hazel or hassle however you want to pronounce it so we've got h a s e l l okay so the first one is height can we recover from our maneuver by 3000 feet above ground level so we want to make sure we've got sufficient height for whatever maneuver we're about to do airframe so we want to make sure that the airframe is suited to the maneuver we're going to do so if it's aerobatics for example some aircraft are only Uh, rated to do certain maneuvers so before you do that maneuver you want to make sure that the aircraft uh, you know you've checked all the documents the aircraft is um, approved to do those maneuvers you want to make sure things like the gyros are caged as well Uh, security so security in the cabin are there loose items that we need to stow away before we do any stalling or aerobatic maneuvers you don't want things banging on the head or floating around the cockpit so security is s then we've got engine we want to make sure the t's and p's are in the green we want to do a put the carb heat on quickly make sure that there's no carb ice in either so that when we do recover from whatever maneuver we have we've got full engine power there uh, location so we want to be clear of cloud we want to be clear of controlled airspace and we want to be clear of built up areas and airfields as well active airfields okay so we've got clear of cloud clear of controlled airspace clear of built up areas 
and clear of any active airfields. And the last thing is a lookout. We want to have a good lookout. So usually that that comprises of a 360 degree turn. Uh, some people break that up into two 180 turns, but generally it's a 360 degree turn. And we're having a good lookout for other aircraft in the vicinity and more to the point stuff that's underneath you as well so if you're doing aerobatics or you're doing stalling or spinning or anything like that generally you're going to be losing altitude while you do that so have a good look around lower behind you as well just to make sure that there's nothing there that's going to cause you a problem okay so that's the hassle or hazel check now if you're doing the aerobatics for a prolonged period or stalling for a prolonged period what you can do is shorten that check down so you do another check after your hazel check or a few minutes in you could do a health check so it's the same letters you know the same definitions we've got height engine location lookout okay so you just miss off a couple of those items but that's for prolonged periods of aerobatics or stalling so now we've got a cruise check now a cruise check is something that we do kind of like every 20 25 minutes um just to make sure that everything's going well it's called a frida check f r e d a okay so we've got fuel Make sure we're on the right tank. Um, if you've got a PA28, for example, it's usually common for to switch between the tanks so that the fuel uh, levels balance out. If you're in a Cessna, they generally have gravity-fed tanks, and as such, that they they kind of they will be out of balance slightly, but you don't need to switch the tanks generally. So if you need to switch your tank, you might want to do that at this point. Uh, check your fuel contents. Have you still got enough for the trip? Is there any problems with that? You know, you're burning more fuel than you anticipated. You know, make sure you've got enough for a diversion as well. So generally, we're just checking we're on the main tank that we want to be, the right tank we want to be, and that we've got the sufficient quantity. Next thing is radio. So we want to check our radios. Are we tuned in to the correct frequency that we want to be tuned into? So do we need to change frequency? You know, make sure the audio panel is selected to the right radio as well, things like that. Who are we talking? talking to are we are we talking to the right people at this point you might want to ditch the person you're talking to and move on to your next frequency so that's the, that's the thing with the radios we're just checking that we're on the right frequency and checking who we're talking to generally so next thing is engine so again we're going to look at t's and p's make sure the suction's good we're going to pull the car peat hot again it's just to make sure that the engine's running correctly and we're not suffering with any carb icing next thing is di that's the d so it's it's you're checking your direction you know are you on the correct heading that you uh, planned for and is your di and compass aligned because if they're not you might have been flying off track for some time so it's the direction the di and compass is aligned and are we flying the planned heading last thing is the altimeter is it set to the current q and h so if you're if you're flying region to region the, the q and h you may have been up, you know updated with the q and h and maybe you forgot to change it so check that you're still on the correct q and h okay and make sure as well that you're flying still the desired altitude for your flight so that's frida next one it's a short one but it's, it's something that people generally uh, in the early days find that they don't remember is is pat and apt okay so when you're entering a climb or starting a descent we use an acronym called pat and it's power attitude and trim so in the instance of a climb usually we'd be if it's not a cruise climb we'd be adding full power if it's not a cruise climb okay so we'd be adding power keeping the aircraft coordinated with the rudder and then we're adopting the pitch attitude and then we're trimming to remove the forces from the control column okay so we're trimming to maintain that that climb likewise on the descent you do the same thing you but in this case you'd reduce the power set a descent attitude and then trim for it okay so that's power attitude trim like i say that's used either entering a climb or starting a descent now apt apt that's used leveling off from a climb first you would adapt adopt rather the attitude that you want then you would set the power okay and then trim for it so for example you know you're at the top of the climb you've leveled off you're allowing the aircraft to accelerate a little bit then you're removing some of the power okay and then trimming for it okay so that's apt so that's used leveling off from a climb another one which is a handy acronym and it's it's, it's not really an acronym or a, it's it's just a thing that we use for forced landings and it's the five s's okay so it's a s <laughs> okay so we've got there if you're trying to this is when you're trying to identify a field for your forced landing you're looking at the size of the field is it suitable 
to land in size wise you're looking at the shape of the field you know has it got a a really weird shape to it which would make it difficult ideally you want it to be fairly straight you know so that you're not uh, having to kind of kink your approach or anything like that okay so so that's the, the first two so we've got size we've got shape then we're looking at slope has it got an, an upslope or a downslope that you know particularly wouldn't be desirable you want it to be fairly flat then we're looking at the surface so ideally grass would be better but we're looking at the surface so if it's full of crops that might be something that you don't want to get involved in because it might cause the the aircraft to land badly and um then if it's you know it might even be a fire risk as well so um so we're looking at the surface of the runway you know has it got crops in it is it grass is it a plowed field again a plowed field wouldn't be the best either so ideally we're looking for green okay we're looking for a green field to land in and then we're looking at the surroundings you know are there power cables are there are there animals in the surroundings as well you know ideally if you want to land in a field you don't want to land in a field full of sheep <laughs> so you know you're looking at the surroundings making sure there's no problems there you know so we're sort of looking power cables you know animals uh, trees all that kind of stuff okay so that's your five s's size shape slope surface and surroundings so the next one we're looking at is one that we use uh for vor tracking um i'm not sure if this is one that everybody uses but it's it, we call it stiff s-t-i-f and s stands for select okay so we're selecting a nav aid as in a vor for example within range t is for tune so we're going to look at our chart look at the frequency for that uh, vor and we're going to tune that in on the nav radio next thing is identify so all vors have a morse code identifier which is on the chart and what you do is you're listening in to that vor and it emits a morse code signal which should correspond with the morse code identifier on the chart um obviously i don't know morse code very well most people don't so that usually on the back of your knee board there is like um a list of all the letters and things like your dashes and your dots and things it is on there so you can see it so um, but you'll be looking to make sure that that identifier matches what's on the chart and the next thing the f is flags okay so on your cdi there is a, a flag on there a flags uh, kind of box it has symbols in there and um you want to make sure there's no warning flag on there what you, and you make sure the flag that's on there is what you're expecting to see so usually you have like a to or a from flag and that needs to be corresponding with what you're anticipating it so if it says to and you're expecting it to say from obviously there's a, a problem so um you know you need to make sure that that corresponds okay so select tune identify and flags the last one i think really i want to look at is the bum fitch now i've heard different variations of this this particular checklist has bum fitch which isn't particularly easy to remember bum fil bum fitch you're not likely to remember that very easily um but most people have bum fitch okay which is b-u-m-f-f-i-c-h-h -H, okay so bum fitch and that is brakes okay so b for brakes so brakes you want to push your feet on the brake pedals when you're in the air make sure they've got brake pressure Obviously, if you're um, if you have a hydraulic leak or something like that, and um, you're flying along and you press the brake pedals, and one of the pedals sort of sinks to the floor, there's no pressure there, then you might actually have a hydraulic problem. Okay, which you could anticipate when you land that you might want to make sure that you land fairly short and you don't need to use the brakes so much, because um, you might have a complete brake failure just on one side, and that would be hard to hard to control the airplane also silly thing I, I can't think of a reason why why it might happen but make sure your parking brake's not on okay if you've took off with it off um i'm sure that it's not going to come on in flight but you want to just double check that your parking brake's not on before you land okay so that's the brakes undercarriage now for most training airplanes that you're going to be flying they'll have a fixed undercarriage so the likelihood is that unless something's fallen off the airplane in flight the, the undercarriage is still fixed right okay so if you can see it have a look you know if you've got if you're in a Cessna for example you'll be able to look out the window and see that your wheel's still there <laughs> but if you're in a retractable aircraft for example you know you'd be selecting your gear to come down 
and then usually you can hear that happen you can feel it happen you can feel the drag as they come down and also you have the three green lights uh, in this sort of triangle shape on the instrument panel which indicate that your gear are indicating that they're down correctly so you're looking for three greens but in the case of the training aeroplanes like we say there's nothing much more than you can do than if you can see them out the window they're still there right so that's undercarriage then we're looking at mixture if you've leaned the aircraft off at all during the flight we want to make sure that the mixture is now at full rich so we're going to make sure the mixture is at full rich so if we need to do a go around or anything like that we've got all the power there um, then we're looking at fuel okay so we're making sure that it's on and sufficient for a go around then we're looking at flaps so set the flaps as required within the limitation speeds of the aircraft so usually the aircraft got a white arc and you'll know that you know that's where the aircraft needs to be in that white arc before you select flap okay next thing is i for instruments so we're checking that the di and compass are aligned again we're making sure that we've selected on the altimeter if we're flying qfe for the approach whatever we'll make sure we've selected that or if you're flying q and h make sure it's the correct q and h other than that again we're just looking at the um, engine instruments and things making sure the temps and pressures are good carburetor heat uh, set as required so depends on what your school teach we we teach to have the carburetor heat on hot put it away if you need to go around and then you want to make sure that you haven't uh, got any symptoms of carb icing as well next thing is h for harnesses we want to make sure our harnesses are secure ready for landing if you've got any passengers make sure that their harnesses are also secure um, and next thing is the the last h which is hatches so harnesses and hatches so we're making sure the doors are you know properly closed and the windows are closed so that's bum fitch brakes undercarriage mixture fuel flaps instruments car peat, harnesses and hatches we've gone through in flight acronyms that we use generally day to day for the vfr you know ppl lapel like we said your school might have different acronyms you know use whatever you're taught but i just thought it was something we'd touch on it's an interesting thing you know i quite often hear acronyms i've not heard of but these are fairly um common ones these ones okay we will do a couple more episodes on this uh, but today these are just in flight acronyms and, and mnemonics for ppl students hope you enjoyed this episode hope you found it useful we'd really appreciate it if you're enjoying uh, the podcast if you'd subscribe to us it's free to subscribe okay and if you'd leave us a review it really helps us grow the channel and yeah we'll see you on the next episode and don't forget to uh, like subscribe and ding the bell for more notifications if you like this episode please like subscribe and ding the bell to receive notifications of the next episode